Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Good yes. Morning, coach. All right. Good morning. Happy. All of a sudden, it was really quiet. I heard people talking, and then it got quiet. So the recording has started. So once again, how's everybody doing on this July 19th? Amazing. You? I am amazingly doing amazing. Amanda, <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, is it not? It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's totally amazing. I hope the gym was good this morning at 4.30 or whenever you were there. Yes. Uh, excuse me. At 4.30, I've been there half an hour. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. All right. Thank you, everybody. I had to mute you. I'm sorry, but I want you guys to ask questions today because I've got to get this nice recording for the podcast. So if you want to ask a question, you hit star six and you unmute yourself. If you unmute yourself, just make sure that you remute it on your own phone uh, because, it, you know, it will be able to hear you. Trust me, anybody who unmutes himself. That's what I can tell immediately when someone unmutes himself because it's very obvious. So hit star six and you can unmute yourself So because today it's just me. And I want to talk about, okay, the fundamentals of this wonderful market. By the way, the fundamentals in any market are pretty much the same with some slight tweaks right now. Like, for instance, a family member of mine just bought a phone, uh, uh, you know, a property recently after, you know, six, five, six offers. And, and finally, um, you know, I said to them, well, are you paying over market? Well, no, I'm paying full price. Well, that's your problem. Really? And yeah, you got to pay over full price. You can't pay. You can't, um, you know, in today's market, that's why working with buyers is so frustrating from some of you. Some of you actually tell me things like there's no properties for them. That's not true. That's your mind just making it easy for you to give up. There are, there's properties for everybody. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We're in a market that, uh, you know, like if this was the last two peaks that I've been in that were this crazy, I've been in a bunch of them, but the, the last, I would say this, this is the third massive peak that I've been in as a real estate agent. And it's the most unique. That's true too. And it's most unique for a number of reasons. Like if this was 2007 or eight, we have way more properties than we need because the builders built a lot and population was different. And, you know, so right now we have, it's for the first time ever, since I've been in the business in 36 years, supply and demand issue. We don't have enough properties for the amount of people that want to buy, people that have been renting, you know. Uh, so, um, and people downsizing, sizing, upsizing, downsizing, whatever. We have all that's going on. So, uh, it, you know, there's not enough new construction to fill that gap, all right, which is why the prices are going up. The interest rates are incredible. The market's, uh, you know, almost a third is cash, and in some cases more. So uh, on and on and on, there's so many reasons why this is an incredible market. So your buyers need to realize that if they want to buy a property today, the major league deal is in the interest rate. Can I, do I like the house? Can I afford the payment? The price is only like third on the list right now. You can be right. Well, I'm not paying over this. What, what do you mean? In payment or in price? Because if you wait and the, and the price has changed, I can tell you the interest rates aren't going lower. So it's really a whole thing. You know, like this particular family where I'm talking about, their house had gone up a tremendous amount. That's what made them able to buy the next house. So markets are relative. You know, if you're going to get a whole bunch on yours, guess what? If you're not going to get much on yours, then you're going to. So it's all relative. That's how you have to look at it. You got to be healthy about it mentally. You got to understand what's involved. And if your buyers aren't willing to do that, you're better off spending your time prospecting for listings. Had another agent this morning say to me, well, listing agents today aren't even doing their homework. They're making you do it. And if you don't, then you're not going to get it. I go, yeah, because they think, you know, they're king. And, and honestly, now I would never do that as a seller, as a sales agent, I would put all the correct information. I would do all that. But some agents, aren't doing that and they're making you run around and do all that for them if you want to get the place. Okay. If your buyers wants to get it, I don't want to be, I don't like being a hostage. I've never liked being a hostage. This business will make you a hostage in my first two years in the business hostage, but I didn't know any different. It took me two, three years just to figure this out that I wanted to become a listing agent. I took my first listing in my third year in real estate. Not many people know that it's a fact, but I was 20 and 21, got my license at 19, started my first full year at 20, then 21. By the time I was uh, 22, I took my first listing, and it was um, a two-family. I remember it was like a, well, let's just put it this way. A bomb would have been a good improvement to this place. But I listed and sold it, 
and then I sold another one in the neighborhood. So they got, it got me started. So, you, you know, if you're not spending time every – and I know I'm a broken record about this. You know, it's like going to the gym. You know, Rick, you keep talking about, you know, doing squats for my legs. I'm so irritated by that. Well, uh, that's the best way to build your legs. And there's other ways. Squats are incredibly good. All right? Or leg press if you don't like it all the weight on your back. You know, Rick, you keep talking about bench pressing. So irritating. Well, if you want to get your chest in shape, that's a pretty good way to do it. Oh, Rick, you keep talking about prospecting. Well, if you want to sell real estate in today's market, in a, in a market where it's never been easier to call people or door knock them because, oh, uh, you know, your house has gone up, you know, like 18, 20% since last year this time. How can they get mad at you? I and mean, I'm just out here passing out information. A lot of us need to have the distance. I was just talking to one of our top agents in Arizona before this call. And what I was telling her is some people have it. Some people don't naturally. Some people have to develop it. Everybody can have it, though. And it is hard to describe, define, but it's just it's the belief that you have to talk to X amount of people a day, okay, to uh, do real estate, and it's going to make your life better by doing that, and understand what's involved with having quality conversations. Okay, you, have, you just have to get that. And if you don't get, this in, get that in real estate, you know, Pick something else. You have to be incredibly disciplined. You remember, you, you're a business owner. You own your own business. You're a solo entrepreneur. No one's going to do this for you but you. So you have to commit to X amount of conversations. I don't care if it's for social media, farming, just listed, just sold, expired for sale by owners, your sphere, or a mix of all of the above. You've got to be talking to people. And then you have to learn how to talk to them properly. Open-ended questions, repeat, approve. By the way, I did a one-day success series in Arizona last week, um, and it was on Google Hangouts. This week, I'm doing my three-day version for everybody. Okay, not even live. It's just on Google Hangouts for everybody, all three markets. If you need a refresher, I happen to talk about how to take listings a lot, which is I recommend that you learn how to do that. Well, there are no listings. That is the dumbest thing you could say to yourself right now. That's, that, that's really not that intelligent. Uh, oh, that's, that's being lazy. Your self-talk, okay, will help you or hurt you. And if you're looking to have it hurt you, it's you're trying to be lazy. It's a cop-out. You need to start talking to yourself properly. There are, plenty, there are more listings that have come on the market this year than last year this time, and last year before the year before and before that. So you can't – there's plenty of listings. They're just going under contract fast. The process hasn't changed. You still have to go – you still have to take listings every day. So the first thing I wrote down is action is a verb. Does that sound familiar? It's a, you know, it's a best-selling book right now. I'll, I'm kidding. It's my book, Action is a Verb. But that's just a, that's a statement in my mind I tell myself all the time. Okay, success is a verb and action is a verb. Okay, did I mix those two up? I probably did. But success is a verb, action. You have to be doing something every day in order for you to be successful. And you've got to decide what it's going to be because non-action is not a technique. All right? So that's why I think you need the end in mind. What does it look like? You know, like what, okay, um, at the end of this year, at the end of next year, some people like to visualize three years out. I like to do a little of all, all of the above. You know, five years out, three years out, right now. What do you need to be doing right now in order for that to happen? But you need to know where you're going. It's like a GPS. You know, you need to, if I'm, I'm going to end up at 50 deals a year, and when I get there, that's going to be good enough, and I'll probably just, you know, set up a company or my company, whatever it is. You just need to understand what that is, all right? And in order to do that, you, there are certain actions you need to take in order to get there. Okay, so this is not easy, but it's completely simple. It's not easy, but anybody can do it. Anybody can do a lot of stuff in life. See, this is not, okay, if we were talking about basketball, you know, the NBA, you got to be a certain height, you got to be a certain age, obviously, you got to be in certain shape, right? If we're talking about a football, same thing, basketball, swimming, whatever, okay? Because, you, you know, you have to have a certain amount of natural talent or whatever to be able to do that. Then you got to work your butt off anyway, because everybody who's in that position is working their butt off to get there. In real estate, 
It doesn't matter how tall you are, what color you are, what nationality you are, if you have a little bit of an accent. It doesn't matter, and none of that matters if you're willing to do the work. So the problem is most people aren't willing to do the work, a very small percentage. Some of you have heard my 90-10 rule. It used to be the 80-20 principle, the Pareto principle, which says that 20% of the people are doing 80% of the business. I would say today that's changed. 90-10 is more like it. All right? So understand what your actions need to be and understand what the end goal is. Where do I want to end up? What do I want to look like? What, like with working out, what do you want to look like? What kind of health do you want to be in? What do you want your labs to look like? You got to have all these as goals. You have to. I mean, not knowing is is not going to is not going to help you guys. You need to know all those little things if you want to be successful. Now, if if I was talking about working out, what do you need to eat? You know, so it's not complicated. It really is. It's not easy, but it's not. Some of the toughest things in life are completely simple, like losing weight. Eat. Like my mother gives me crap about this all the time. And some of you know my nickname for her is Jaka Khan. Okay, her name is Jackie, but I've nicknamed her. She has a great sense of humor. But she'll say to me, and now she has lost a lot of weight. And she would say to me, how do you lose weight, Rick? And I'd say, you burn more calories than you eat. She would, you're such a jerk. But, but that's the truth. You burn more calories than you eat. That's really how you lose weight. That's the ultimate. But how do you do that? Well, that's up to you. There's a lot of ways you can do it. How do you get in shape? You rip muscle. It grows back stronger. That's ultimately what you're doing. Slight micro tears grows back stronger. That's ultimately what you're doing. How do you want to do that? There's a number of ways you can. How do you want to be successful in real estate? I can tell you right now that you need to be listing conscious. When I was selling with my team, I would call it in the hunt mentality. Oh, where's our next listing coming from? Who in the database? How about on your lead follow-up? All right, especially in the mornings. So from 8 to 11 at, on my team was all about prospecting and taking listings. Then we would meet after and talk about the pipeline. And then afternoon, do anything you want on your appointments and your negotiating and whatever. Okay. And my assistant at the time, Carrie, was pretty good at keeping us away from everything but that. All right. So decide what your actions are going to be. You guys know what mine, I mean, I went to, I was at the Mike Ferry retreat. Okay. Uh, what was it? Tuesday and Friday last week, all great stuff. And Mike is all about action, which is great. Okay. And I would say that he talks about the super foundational, uh, you know, boilerplate things that all of you should be doing. All right. Um, Let's see. Uh, First things first is my next on my list. First thing, in other words, okay. So, the top agents I know do. I didn't allow anything to happen until I got my contacts in. Then I had the rest of the day to handle whatever was ever in front of me in order of priority. But as soon as you let something other than your contacts get in the mix, you're never going to make your contacts. You just got to decide it's the most important thing you do all day, every day, and get it done first. So first things first, schedule time. Block everything out. Learn how to say no. Like me, I would actually lock my door. I was on a professional floor. You know, the, my most productive team years, I was on a professional floor. Once we got in there and prospected, locked the door because there were other people on the floor that were friendly that wanted to say hi. They'd go to my door, try to open it, knock on it. We just wouldn't answer. We'd be prospecting. As, that's what I used to do. Lock, it, lock the world out till noon. You can do it. Trust me, you can do this. Okay. All right, and don't, a lot of people go, well, I'm going to leave my message. Hi, this is Rick. I'm prospecting for buyers and sellers till noon. Don't do that. Just tell them you're on an appointment, and your appointment has to be, happens to be prospecting. Okay? You know, whenever I meet with a client, I set expectations with them right from the beginning. Okay, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, we're putting your home on the market. Hey, I just want you to know that, like, I've been here for an hour now, right? Hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, whenever you've been there. And if you noticed, I haven't even considered answering my cell phone. Right? And if you're doing that, you're already making a mistake. Okay? So, uh, and I just want you to know that I have, you know, a few other customers and clients, and when, I with them, when I'm with them, I give them the same courtesy. So if you're looking for me, you know, 
you know, I have a full-time assistant who can answer most of your questions. And if you just need me, leave me a message. It's never more than an hour, an hour and a half before I call you back. But sometimes it's right away. I'll pick it up. Okay, I just don't pick it up during my prospecting. And I take an, you know, a 10-minute break every 50 minutes. So if, I, if it's an emergency, I call them back. If it's not, I can wait. All right? So you, got, you just have to set up your life for success. Set up your schedule. Some of you are just at the whim. Well, I need great customer service. Great customer service isn't dropping anything you're doing to talk to somebody. When you can, great. When you can't, you can't. If you want to have enough customers and clients for life, okay, get really serious about your contacts every day. Okay? The next thing I wrote down is win-win environment, meaning that you're going to win by doing this and your clients are going to win by doing this. It's not one or the other, as you always hear Mark say. Or as Mark says, it's not an or environment, it's an and environment. You can win and your customers can win. You don't want to win at your customer's expense, your client's expense. You want everybody to win, and everybody can win at this. Okay, so that's number four. Number one, success is a verb. What are the actions you're going to take? Number two, end in mind. Understand what that is. Have a picture of it. That's why those dream boards are so important. First things first, to me, that means get your contacts out of the way, prioritize the rest of your day after that. And you have, you know, like in my schedule, I had, you know, my appointment time, my lead follow-up time, but the prospecting time was always first because statistically, that's the best time to do it. That's why I go to the gym early in the morning. If I don't get it done then, it ain't happening. I have to go to bed early at night in order to do that. So I guess that's when it really starts, the night before. Okay, uh, win-win. Make sure you're winning and so are your clients. All right, that's your fiduciary responsibility. You'll get paid a lot of money in this business if you, if you focus on that. You know? And by the way, I call this the fundamentals and my little jokers. There are three words in fundamental fun and mental at the end, right? And the middle word is duh. So my little joke is fun, the mentals, and it's a lot of fun, and duh, it's all mental. Business is a lot of fun if you're making money. And duh, it is, a lo- it's mental. All this stuff we're talking about is a mindset. If you buy into the mindset, and then the body, body follows through. Okay? Number five on my list is listen to people. Like active listening. Now, let me tell you something. That was the toughest one for me to learn. I didn't do that naturally. I still have to make sure I'm listening. I usually repeat back what someone's saying in my head while they're saying it. That's what forces me to listen. That's why the over repeat and approve was so, like, mind-shattering for me when I heard that. Repeat and approve. I was like, that makes sense to me. Because I have to listen to repeat back. Okay, so listen. Okay, I'm back. (laughs) The system booted me off. Very nice. All of a sudden, I looked and my phone was dead. Hopefully, I wasn't gone for too long. Can someone unmute and just let me know that you guys can hear me? Hit star five and say, yep, we can hear you. Anybody? You're you're good, Rick. Okay, thanks, Murad. All right, Murad, while you're unmuted, do you have a question? Any question about any of the stuff I've covered so far? No, you're absolutely right. You know, we got you know these times we gotta find uh, and find the hassle for the listings and uh, do the proper work, and uh, customer yep. service will pay off eventually. Yep, love it. All right, good. How about anybody else? Anybody else have a question or anything they want to say about what we've covered so far? It's kind of important stuff. Nobody, you got everybody's got it all figured out. I love it when they have everything figured out in advance. This is beautiful. All right, so listen to people. Now, listen, if you want to learn how to do that, thanks, Murad, for letting me know, too, by the way. I appreciate that. If you want to um, learn how to listen to people, on my YouTube channel, which you should all be subscribed to, 
there's a video called, I think it's the most watched video on my YouTube channel too, called Having Quality Conversations. Watch it. I can't cover it all right here, but go on my YouTube channel. And then every time I put a new video on, it'll notify you too. That way, if you're not subscribed, I recommend you do that. Even to this podcast too. Podcast app on your phone. Type in my name and you'll have access to every one I've ever done. And the same, uh, if you have an Android phone, it's the Podbean app. Podbean. Just download that Podbean app, and then you can have access to all my podcasts. All right? Just type in my name, Rick Barraby, and you'll get, you'll get there. So listen to people. This is one of my favorite points next, number six. Did somebody have a question? Thought I heard somebody. So synergy to synchronicity. All right? Uh-huh. Doesn't that sound good? Synergy. So we talk about action. We talk about success as a verb. We also talk, then once you've been doing that for a while, you create synergy. Like if you're doing multiple things, you, you know, like I'm, I'm prospecting uh, expireds. I'm practicing my listening presentation. I'm role playing. All right. I'm also calling my sphere. I'm doing door knocking. I'm listening to quality audio books. Okay, so you, you have all these actions that turn into synergy, which eventually turns into synchronicity. Synchronicity is when all these roads come together at a road that you weren't even planning for a lot of times, and it's even better than you thought. It's happened to me a few times in my life. But you've got to be working a long time to have that happen. Some of you may get lucky. It happens before that. What I'm talking about, okay, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example in my own life. I'm prospecting. Um, expires for years and then all of a sudden one day i come across this lot and a lot of you probably wouldn't even call this person 39.9 i remember the price like it was yesterday it was like 1991 or two right so i call this uh a lot of you probably a couple of you may even be born then but uh 1991 i called that was 91 or 92 call this old this old, i caught older gentleman his name was tom hey tom rick Barbie here uh blah 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 and he goes yeah you want to try to sell that lot sure come on over Get, I, go, I go to his home office, I list it, and then I go to see him, one of my builder, medium builder friends, and so then I convince him, buy this subject to me selling a home on. I'll talk him into it. So I go to the seller. He's like, wow, that's a great idea. So, But we get to continue to market the lot as a lot, but we're also marketing a home on the lot. You could do that in my MLS. I don't know if you could do that here, but I could do that in my MLS. And I sell the house on it, which I always know because it's easier to get a home loan than it is a piece of land loan, especially back then. So I sell the house. So now we have a, now I have a, a lot I've sold double ended and I have a listing and I happen to sell this one too. To back then it was a lot. This is before the internet folks. Okay. I know a lot of you, your head just exploded before the internet and, and real estate. Right. Yeah. That's why I used to double end a third of my listings because I had a huge head start. Now today it's obviously way better for the seller. But anyway, so, well, then six months go by, and this guy, Tom, calls me. Hey, Rick, uh, come to my house, to my home office. I want to show you something. He goes, don't worry. You're going to like it. I go, okay. So I go to his house. He's got on the wall, I think it was a 32-lot subdivision, somewhere between 28 and 32 lots. And he said to me, can you do the same thing? Because he wanted he, – this was like his mega retirement. He got it approved. He, he wanted a builder to – like one builder, because it was in his neighborhood, too. He wanted – it to look really nice, have input on the lots, uh, on the, uh, you know, the style of homes. And he wanted, um, you know, premiums and every lot was different priced. And so, you know, so I listed 32 lots. He goes, you want to list all these? Okay, so when someone says that to you, here's my objection. Anyway, let me think about it. Yes. That's what I said. No, I didn't say that. I go, yes, I'd love to, Tom. And so I listed all of them. Went to see my builder friend who we now bought. He bought five of them. Boom, had to close in 60 days, and then one closing every 45 days after that. And uh, I sold all, all 32 lots to one guy, and I double-ended about half the new construction listings that I sold. Now, that was not anything I had planned for. That got me started in new construction. It was not in my plan. But it came in front of me. I looked at it. Hmm, how could we do this? And did it that way. And that's a synchronicity, I think, reward from the prospecting gods <laughs> or you can call it karma, okay, that I didn't plan for that. But it was nice. Okay, and it got me started on a whole different route in my real estate career. All right, so, synchro- okay, so synergy for synchronicity. So action becomes synergy, which eventually becomes synergy. And then the last one I have is sharpen the saw, 
practice, okay, uh, you know, listen to audio books. Just keep getting your mind sharp. You have to stay into this, right? You know, and this is your business. This is your life. Become one of them who have it. It is something that can be developed. And it's just a disciplined way of living your life, not when you're at home, not when you're off of work, but at work. It makes everything else seem worth it. Days off are better. Food tastes better. Water tastes better. When you have a purpose and you're following it every day, everything looks better to you. If you're not maximizing your potential, it's going to bother you. Right? So that's my... That's my point for today, folks. It just feels good. Even when you're not seeing the business as much as you want to yet, just by taking the actions makes you feel way better, more confident, more competent, more natural than ever. So here's my line. Give yourself the gift of a consistent, disciplined schedule every day. It will pay you forever. And once you have it as a habit, it will stick with you too. Questions for me today? Don't be shy, folks. Once again, these are the fundamentals of real estate, in my opinion. Any questions? You guys, everybody's got it all down. This is great. Okay, so, folks, we will pick this up. Remember, I'm doing a success series starting tomorrow. Google Hangouts. Look for the ads. They're all over the place and on social media. And, and the, the link is right on the email that you guys get or social media. So be on my success series Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week. All right, at one to four. Also, um, I'll be doing this again next week, same time, 8 a.m. All right, guys, keep it rocking. If you need me, call me anytime. Thank you. Talk to you.